colorectal cancer is one such cancer where presence of a liver metastasis doesn't make it non-dissectable. And the second thing to learn is that the best palliation in colorectal cancer is also surgery. So this essentially is one viewpoint, should it be a norm? So I'll change it into should it be a norm? It's a debatable topic. So please pay attention to the fact simultaneous resection. So that is resecting the primary as well as the liver metastasis in the same sitting, in the same war at the same time. Should it be a protocol? Well, most people would agree, yes. But let's look at the evidence and the way we should approach it. The colorectal cancer now onwards CRC you sh you are all familiar with the fact that liver metastasis does not make it non dissectable you can make it resectable by either adding new adjuvant chemotherapy beforehand the various options this is one the other is you do surgery for the primary then wait which also gives you an idea about the tumor's behavior and then you can maybe put the patient on chemotherapy and follow it up with salvage resection the advantage of this approach is you will be able to get an in vivo chemosensitivity which would mean you would know about the metastasis, how is it going to behave. But sometimes the metastasis may actually disappear. If it does disappear, then we can straight away go only for the primary. If it doesn't disappear, or it is persisting, or it is worsening, then we are dealing with a bad biology, which is so therefore neurogen chemotherapy is a good prognostic uh, method. It's a good method to find out about the behavior of the tumor. Now, it, needless to say, even for the primary, if it is locally advanced, you may actually resort to neoadjuvant chemotherapy or neoadjuvant chemo radiation. We are all familiar with that, especially for the rectal cancer. And then you can follow it up with a so with surgery. Of course, in the colonic cancer, you don't have radiation. As a new in the neurogen setting, so we we are looking at neurogen chemotherapy. So I was just talking about the various options. If you have the metastasis which is small and confined to one segment, are they multiple confined to one segment, or to one lobe? It is resectable. So we are obviously talking about this situation. This is studded liver, where we are looking at a liver which has got metastasis on all the sides. So you may not be able to do it. The other thing is, you may not need to do an anatomical resection. You can actually do metastatectomy, which means just a clear margin, which is no ink, no tumor on the ink. Or with a very little margin of one centimeter, you can do that. So it's possible to do it if it is confined to a segment or to a lobe, but not possible if it is beyond that. So one has an option, therefore, to, to look at the possibility of uh, the various scenarios, new adjuvant chemotherapy followed by surgery, both for primary and the metastasis to the liver. Or you can have a scenario where you have surgery for primary, chemo, and then surgery for liver met. Or you can have, there are scenarios where they put patient on chemotherapy 
And if the liver metastasis responds, they do the resection of the metastasis first, which looks a little out of place and doesn't look like, look very logical. And then they get the maximum response for the, you know, the primary and they can resect the primary. So there are various options and therefore the topic is worthwhile. As a matter of fact, 14 to 35 percent patients with colorectal cancer have liver metastasis. This is just to give you a background at presentation. And another one third will subsequently develop, which makes it 33 percent to nearly 34 percent or 35 percent of this range. So 50 percent would have metastasis at some point, either to begin with or later on. And in these cases, liver resection offers the only chance of cure for metastasis that are confined to the liver. And then you can have the five-year overall survival rates up to 58%, which would make it almost a curative resection. Untreated liver metastasis, which you can leave behind and with, with, may not address them as you would do for most. I mean, like I mentioned, the best palliation for colorectal cancer is surgery, which essentially is for the primary. So you may actually leave the metastasis. In that case, what will happen? They have a median survival of less than 12 months, less than a year. While we are talking about five-year survival rate with the metastasis being handled after having been handled to be 58 percent and 12 months and a five-year survival rate almost zero. So that's a very, very important point that one should take into consideration. So naturally, it is very clear that the section of the resectable liver metastasis adds to the survival. And when I'm talking about the overall survival, it is a significant fact that one should not ignore. So to discuss uh, when to do is another issue, but it must be done is the most important and the most vital part of understanding of the colorectal cancer. It doesn't need reinforcement that a majority would have metastasis either at the time of presentation or later. They may have it at the time of presentation or later, which is about 33 percent, one third that is. So it fought into nearly 33 percent here also. So you know the sizable number would need it. And if you don't offer, if you don't do it, the survival, five year survival rate is zero. And if you do it, you can get to the tune of 58 percent. So that's the difference. So zero percent versus 58 percent. That is why it is mandatory to do it. And no amount of chemotherapy is going to compensate for suboptimal surgery. So please understand it is necessary. Therefore, we'll discuss it in details and it's very important. As a matter of fact, overall outcome after liver section for colorectal metastasis, I mean, as primary or two-stage resection, we don't know because there is not enough data to suggest either way. Although many people would still argue that surgery done at one go is likely to benefit more, but it has to be taken into account that the performance status of the patient would matter, the extent of the primary would matter, and if for primary cancer you are giving the patient chemo, then might as well let it be for both, because if the locally advanced primary cancer would need chemo chemotherapy anyway. So if you're using neoadjuvant chemotherapy, I keep slipping into chemo radiation once in a while. Please do understand that for the rectal cancer, as I was mentioning. Many patients still do poorly, even after careful selection and successful removal of metastatic lesions. So naturally, when one says 58%, one is talking about only the 58%, the 42% won't have a great outcome. So the outcome as assessed is heterogeneous, so it may not really matter. And as a matter of fact, patients post successful liver resection have a high risk of developing recurrent disease, either in the liver or elsewhere. I mean, 
this naturally is talking about what the capital G of oncology that is biology in cancer biology is the king patient selection is the queen and you may do whatever the stage comes out to be just just a bishop it doesn't go beyond it that's the order so this is the priority as we look at so it makes sense and there's no rocket science in it if a patient has got liver metastasis to begin with and we have done the resection it's one group of patients where there is a high risk of recurrence so they have a higher recurrence rate and that shouldn't surprise us but this is as a matter of fact to highlight these important points and this is to the tune of 60 to 70 percent after you've done the primary resection so when you've done it beforehand they are going to get it well this, this picture may be different with a new adjuvant setting where you have taken care of the systemic metastasis roughly one third of these patients would die within two years of surgery so the idea of highlighting these facts is that you should know the figures as per the evidence as to what is the outcome it is getting different and the data is emerging that it's not as dismal as it looks colorectal cancer is one such cancer where the outcome can be good with surgery and this subset Please pay attention to this without getting confused. They have a higher risk of developing recurrent cancer because they already are a bad biology. Why are they a bad biology? Because there is metastasis. And since they are a bad biology, the recurrence rates would also be different. This is important to understand. So bad biology will appear in the form of METs to liver, and you've done the resection, you would have a lot of them not coming out too well. And they have a high recurrence rate, which is 60 to 75, 70%. Excuse me. The recurrence can happen. That's a recurrent disease may happen either in the liver or elsewhere. Even when you've done the primary resection and one third of these would die. So recurrence, liver or primary site or somewhere, which obviously has nothing to do with the resection you've done. That has got to do with this. And about 70 to 80% would die within two years. So this survival rate would be less. It will be two years only, two years only. Now, there is no controversy in certain facts. There is controversy in certain areas. And where there is no controversy includes technically easily resectable primary tumor that is right sided cancer transverse colon cancer left side and sigmoid colon cancer they are very easily easily done technically you can do laparoscopically or you can do by open method but it is possible to resect them easily or and and simultaneously along with that peripherally placed low volume liver disease Confined to segments 2, 3, 4, B, 5, 6. They're easily accessible, right? And subcapsular lesions in the segments 4, A, 7, and 8. So, in a, this, is a, this is a, shall I say, an easier situation. So, it makes sense to have synchronous resection at the same procedure without increased morbidity or mortality. This is possible, but this is a select group. You know, conveniently placed. I'll use the word primary as well as primary as well as liver met. The segments that I've told you and the primary I've told you, they're conveniently placed right sided, transverse colon, sigmoid colon growths. They're very conveniently removed and we can get a clear margin. And the liver has, suppose, the metastasis which are waiting to be removed and they're confined to a small segment, naturally, it would make very little sense not to do it in the same sitting. And it's possible to get a good outcome in one surgery.
to one surgery and a good outcome if it is peripherally placed lesion and conveniently placed primary it is possible to do in the same go and that's the example i've given here so there is no controversy about should we do two stage procedure here no one stage and if you do synchronous resection at the same time without increased morbidity or mortality you can get the same outcome now there is some bit of evidence which you would like to touch here when you compare simultaneous resection versus delayed resection that is delayed here would mean either i do primary first or i do metastasis first and then i do i do i do a staged surgery there is lack of convincing evidence there are areas of controversies currently no randomized controlled trials on the relative merits of different therapeutic approaches available when this lecture was delivered till that time maybe there are emerging trials but as of now no solid con concrete evidence there is no evidence surgical practice as standard of care for resectable um, metastasis to the liver or uh, in patients especially the colorectal cancers almost all studies regarding these issues are non randomized with inherent limitations you cannot have randomized control trial easily done in these cases because it's very difficult to get patients into each arm and randomization may be a challenge and it may have issues pertaining to the ethics because you cannot deny a patient a surgery just because he falls into a particular arm and it is like i mentioned if it is a conveniently placed cancer with a very very superficial liver metastasis surgery should be offered and if you randomize this patient into the other arm it will not be ethically acceptable therefore it's nearly nearly it's very difficult to get these trials done the representative data from prospective randomized trials is still missing and we are waiting for it to come and without that so no solid evidence to recommend either way it is possible to uh, to have a tailored discussion in an mdt and it can be planned uh, based on uh, the evidence that emerges and it is possible possible that you can in future get some outcome um in the process you can get some outcome so basically no no great evidence to support it now let's touch a few important scenarios inoperable liver metastasis so you have a liver metastasis which you cannot resect in appropriately selected patients with primarily inoperable liver metastasis secondary resection after downstaging chemotherapy may afford long term outcomes comparable to primary resection which i was discussing beforehand that is you treat the liver metastasis by downstaging it and actually um you can actually get the same kind of an outcome so we treat the metastasis using a good neoadjuvant chemotherapy and you can actually get the liver metastasis downstaged that is in appropriately selected patients so don't forget it with they have initially a primary inoperable liver metastasis you can do secondary resection after downstaging it which is no rocket science again but they can do as good as the primary resection but logically speaking if one was to think surgically in simultaneous approach the liver metastasis in primary tumor are resected at the same time the main objective is cure through removal of all cancer tissue it looks very logical and surgical during a single operation thus avoiding the delay of surgical treatment of liver metastasis it makes sense so if you're doing simultaneous or synchronous resection we are actually doing surgically a correct job getting the last cancer cell out but that doesn't happen in reality because there will be some metastatic element in these patients 
and actually it's not the same disease as opposed to say there is a disease here primary here no metastasis versus metastasis they're two different diseases biologically as i showed in the beginning it's a more aggressive disease we like to have systemic elements and like to to come back faster and have a poorer survival rate so they cannot be comparing apples to oranges in theory there is no difference between theory and practice but in practice there is the difference is you cannot necessarily have an ideal scenario you need to tailor it to a surgeon center patient and mdt decision so it will change individually and there's nothing like one size fits all so need to find what is suitable for a particular patient while i i as i mentioned logically it makes sense and it is it is obvious that simultaneous approach is superior but there are limitations and we need to pay attention to them mortality and mort morbidity of major liver resection if one is carried away and carries the liver resections in these patients they are not so strong their performance status is low and you combining it with the bowel resection is likely to be considerable so importantly the mnm is an issue the mortality and morbidity is an issue and it will be discussed and argued whether the patient deserved the surgery or not and uh, there's no point doing a great surgery with a poor outcome and one doesn't have to be extra radical just because one thinks so and it is considerable in some studies it has been shown to be as high as uh as high as 8% and 36% so pretty high mortality and therefore one needs to tailor it as i mentioned we going back to my earlier argument one size doesn't fit all it should be tailored to the patient first then the center whether they have the facility for it the surgeon should be capable of doing it and the mdt should approve it so there is nothing like you can plan it without consulting your medical oncology friend and the other supportive staff because these patients do is deserve the best in that situation it's one of the uh, treatable cancers where you can get good outcome with surgery but that doesn't mean you'll undertake that surgery in all patients and there is a role of adjuncts and they have made a difference in the overall outcome now this is the cochrane database of systemic reviews which was essentially for resection versus no intervention or other surgical interventions for colorectal cancer liver metastasis a huge database this cochrane database actually gives a good idea uh, which brings out the contraindications to doing the surgical resections simultaneously and it is important to go by evidence whatever is available and with no prospective randomized controlled trials uh, indicating either way it's not a bad idea to go by this on exploration if one notices this metastasis uh, and it is an emergency situation such as colonic perforation right one is operated for an obstructed uh, say there is a growth and there is also a perforation proximal to the obstruction and you have taken it up as an emergency and you also find the liver has a metastasis you had to operate regardless even if you are it's not an operative surprise and you could find out in ct scan beforehand still the patient needs surgery on account of perforation and on account of the growth and one may actually end up produce doing the hartmans or a proper formative rese formal re resection and these patients are already advanced and they have a high risk of occult distal metastatic disease and whether this obstruction or bleeding these are usually the 
you know, predictors or the harbingers of uh, distant metastasis, even if you don't find it. If you find it, that's a different situation. Those with an extremely increased risk of post-operative liver failure, such as liver cirrhosis patient or the other long-standing chronic liver disease patients, or patients in whom the future remnant liver will provide inadequate hepatic resection, they'll serve as contraindications, and that's very, very important. One is, to be clear in this, a patient who's presented with perforation, bleeding, or obstruction, bowel obstruction, bleeding, or perforation, or those with extremely increased risk of post-operative liver failure, such as liver cirrhosis, or they have a long-standing chronic liver disease, usually with alcoholics, and patients in whom future, I mean, the liver mass that you will remain, the percentage of liver that remains after doing estimation is going to be inadequate, they uh, don't undergo simultaneous resections. We can embolize, we can uh, do hepatic artery and chemoembolization to make them shrink, go in for surgery subsequently, or we can occlude one of the portal supply or the hepatic su portal supply to let the remaining segment grow in size so that you can utilize it. So the point is, those with obstruction, perforation, and bleeding, even if you don't find no metastasis, they are at a risk of distant metastasis. So these are not the cases where you should do it. Even if you find, I mean, no distant metastasis, but you find a liver metastasis, so these are not the cases who will benefit much. So there's no point doing simultaneous resection in these patients because if they have liver metastasis and they also have perforation and bleeding, they are advanced cases, they're not likely to have they to get benefit out of it. And in these cases, you can utilize some of the methods of treating, but simultaneous surgical resection, I'm only talking about surgery as a treatment in these patients. That's why that point was raised. The other group is those where if you do the liver resection, this liver is either not functional or the liver reserve is very, very low. Or they have impending chronic liver, when I mean, they have chronic liver disease, which leads to, uh, which may lead to insufficiency. So you don't want to resect the liver where the liver, remaining liver is not enough. What is the evidence? You just touched it. Meta-analysis of 2,880 patients, they were followed up for at least 36 months, they reported that simultaneous resection is as safe as delayed resection as long as the patients are less than 70 years of age and without severe coexisting disease. So that can become your take home. I've mentioned about the contraindication. I have also, this meta-analysis should be extremely useful. Nearly 3,000 patients where they found if you do they, they were followed up for at least 36 months reported. But this, this, this meta-analysis reported that simultaneous resection is as safe as delayed resection. So they will be good patients and the bad biology patients. In the good biology patients, whether you do simultaneous resection or you do stage resection, the outcome is not going to be different. And in the bad biology patient, whether you do simultaneous resection or delayed, it's going to be bad. Now, similarly, in a study by Thelen et al., patients with simultaneous approach had far higher mortality than stage, which was associated with age more than 70 years and major hepatectomy. So they agree on this point and they, these are the studies that one can refer to. So what does it say? Uh, if somebody's more than 70 years and comorbidities, or bad biology. I'm just adding this to sum up because that you one should understand. Simultaneous liver resection has a bad outcome. And this one will have bad both in simultaneous and delayed. In the other patients, simultaneous resection versus delayed resection, no difference in the outcome. This is what the meta-analysis indicates. Now, studying the biology, therefore, is necessary. How does it help? If you have a staged strategy, you get a chance to study the biology. 
So what you can do is you can operate on the primary, observe the metastasis as to its behavior. If it is behaving well, we've got an in vivo evidence that this is going to be a good outcome. So the stage strategy can be good for evaluating the biological behavior of metastasis. I can give you an example of a patient. I had to operate for obstruction. It was a left-sided growth. When we opened up, there was a metastasis to the liver and we did the resection and Hartman and we left the metastasis alone. And uh, we then, in the second stage, we closed the colostomy. Uh, the patient came back after three years with further obstruction following surgery. We opened up, the obstruction was because of the local recurrence where the growth was, the liver metastasis was as it was before. So it had not advanced. And it also showed that it was a good biology cancer, maybe a case where we could have resected the liver metastasis. Now, so stage strategy to evaluate the biological behavior of the metastatic disease, to treat potentially occult disease and to avoid liver resection in patients with rapidly progressing disease. One has to make a, take a call. So biology is the king. And or what we call as a capital G of oncology or the god of oncology should know. Now what, what does it mean? If I have resected the primary and I've left the liver metastasis alone, I put the patient on chemotherapy in adjuvant setting and I see that either this disappears or remains the same and patient lives reasonably well for about, he's disease free for more than a year, then we know the biology is good. This is patient has earned resection of the liver. So we need to pick up the right patients for the surgery. So stage strategy is a great idea in those scenarios where you're not sure about the biology of the tumor. It helps you study the biology and with chemotherapy, it's even better. Now the progression free survival, there is some evidence that simultaneous approach has a negative effect on progression free survival. Some people feel, like I mentioned, most of these are uh, studies which are non-randomized and they have a bias because it depends on the kind of patients you pick up. And uh, if it's a retrospective study, it has the obvious bias of retros being retros retrospective. But progression-free survival has been observed in some studies worse with the simultaneous approach. And uh, the progression-free survival as opposed to overall survival is a better predictor of outcome because there are many too many variables that come in. But it's very difficult to select the patients for a particular study because some cancers based on their biology being good or bad behave differently. Now planned sequential stage procedure has a lower perioperative risk. So when a section of the primary tumor more demanding like T2T3 rectal carcinoma. Treatment of primary requires near joint chemotherapy to downstage. Automatically the liver metastasis is not going to be your priority in this case because you're going to put the patient on chemotherapy before surgery. You want to downstage. When liver disease, that is technically, it becomes non-resectable. No, when technically resectable, it is of such an extent that at least a hemi epitectomy or more is required. Now you can plan your sequential stage procedure. So in that case, sequencing has to be discussed in MDT, MDT because everybody has to be involved. You put the patient on your joint chemotherapy for the primary. I'm sure that benefits the metastasis also. And or the metastasis in any case not resectable, patient would require your joint chemotherapy and we'll look at the outcome and take a call. Now post NACT, which is a usual scenario, if colon cancer patients as opposed to rectal cancer with initially undesectable liver disease are put on the uh, neoadjuvant chemotherapy, the good response, uh, the tumor was initially undesectable, so it makes sense to put them on neoadjuvant chemotherapy. What does that mean? I have a locally advanced rectal cancer and it is non-resectable, so patient goes in for neoadjuvant chemotherapy and we'll assess the response using the same racist criteria, response evaluation criteria and solid tumors 
using MRI and the clinical methods. And if the response is good and we feel that R0 can be achieved using a relatively minor liver resection, a synchronous liver bowel procedure will then be an option. So it's possible, it's not contraindicated in post NSCT. That's what I was trying to highlight. So to conclude, friends, the classic combined and reverse strategies are associated with similar outcomes. What's a reverse strategy? Reverse strategy is treating the liver metastasis first and then putting the patient on chemotherapy to get the best of both worlds. But that naturally is done in a setup where liver resection is a routine and less morbid and can be done endoscopically, laparoscopically, so that the outcome is good. And then the patient is put on, this is not resectable, but this is resectable. So this can be resected. So effectively we are treating the, this is the reverse strategy. And uh, if you do classic, that is you resect, wait, and then go for the stage procedure or combine one setting synchronous. They are associated with the similar outcome. So you should choose the right patient, then you can do synchronous resection. And the progression-free survival may not be affected in those cases. While some authors argue that the mortality and morbidity of major liver resection combined with bowel resection are uh, likely to be considerable, with some studies showing an increase in more than threefold, others disagree with this view. So it's controversial. Again, I would suggest that it would depend the morbidity of surgery. They talk about M and M and morbidity and mortality with combined procedure should be more than staged, which is no rocket science, but it will depend. If it's an early peripheral met in the liver, and single solid met which is easily accessible resection, segment is easily resectable, accessible, and the primary is also resectable, then actually even this can have the same outcome. So you may find that the first statement is contraindicated by this, but this is what a lot of people believe. But many believe that that's not correct. Now, despite experiences reported by some author, there is no consensus. Please mark your, pay attention to this as to for the role of liver first strategy. This is not going to be work, working in most scenarios, as I mentioned, in improving long-term survival in patients with colorectal metastasis. The benefit of chemotherapy in your June or adjuvant setting for resectable colorectal cancer has not been rigorously validated in clinical trials. It's still a surgical disease. And there are several proposed management strategies for patients with disappearing liver metastasis. If the liver metastasis disappear, do we need to do surgery? We don't need to because nobody knows what to do because the tumor has disappeared. So what shows a good biology, a lot of people argue that if you had put a marker there, then you can go for a section of that segment so that the outcome is good. I mean, not the, the, not the complete segment. However, no strong evidence from randomized control trials exist to support either of these managing options. So we are sure that patient selection would be the idea, would be the way forward, and we'll be able to take a call based on the right patient selection. So whether you do a reverse strategy, a primary first, and then met metastasis later or neoadjuvant chemotherapy with synchronous resection or primary plus liver resection that is combined, we can call it, followed by chemotherapy. The outcome can be just the same depending upon the biology of the disease. That's what I'm trying to un make you understand biology of the disease becomes more important, the most important deciding factor, and these decisions must be taken in MDT. And whenever possible, whenever possible, it will make sense to do synchronous resections in good cancers with good biology. Early disease with a easily, with a peripheral liver metastasis is easy to resect. If one has to revisit it, the classic combined reverse strategies, same outcome. Some authors agree, argue, and most would argue that mortality and morbidity of major liver sections along with bowel dissection is going to be considerable, 
well some study showed it can be excuse me threefold others disagree with this view and it totally depends on a center but there are centers that are experts or that that they are expert at liver resections they have a good setup to do liver resection without morbidity and in that setup liver resection along with the primary treatment can be less morbid than other centers despite experiences reported by some authors there is no consensus as to the role of liver first strategy which kind of gets ruled out which is essentially the reverse strategy that is you deal with the liver first and then the primary and uh, this has not been found to improve the long term survival in patients with colorectal cancer the benefit of chemotherapy in new adjuvant or adjuvant setting for resectable colorectal cancer has not been rigorously validated in clinical trials so cannot be recommended as a gospel and to conclude there are several proposed management strategies for patients where the liver metastasis disappear now the footprint of the disease should it be removed or not is an issue because if you have footprint that is marked that can be resected because if the metastasis has disappeared following chemotherapy it's more than likely that the biology is good and we should aim at getting the patient a cure and finally there is no strong evidence either way there are no randomized control trials were prospective to make it worthwhile i did touch upon some meta analysis but at the end of the day the decision has to be taken at an mdt in a scenario where everybody can contribute and make it make it count but by and large surgery remains the primary modality for primary first then for liver or primary and liver or liver first followed by primary nobody knows the outcome is totally dependent on the biology of the disease in a resectable disease role of chemotherapy continues to they can they bring out trials one after the other with a very mild improvement here and there so in new adjuvant setting or in adjuvant setting has not been proven so it totally depends on the scenarios but new adjuvant chemotherapy has a role in non resectable tumors so don't confuse the two in non resectable it, it can make them resectable and that would mean both the primary and the liver metastasis but that i hope it made sense uh, i'll just repeat that uh, the best palliation in colorectal cancer is surgery still and liver metastasis should be resected if it can be resected and the outcome has been shown to improve the 5 year 5 year survival rate can be to the tune of 58% and uh, if not resected it may be 0% to 2 to 3% thank you i hope it made sense i hope it was useful and i hope you enjoyed it as much as i enjoyed getting it to you thank you